Hey everybody, Brian from quantlabs.net. Uh, this is a fairly long video, but it's worth uh, watching. Uh, basically, I show the usage of government data, uh, ISMs, all the US, uh, or PMI, all the different US um, econometric uh, data that you can use to generate trading ideas, uh, which sectors to go after uh, for a long and short plays. As also, uh, I showcase um, uh, some charts and some plots that are generated from this for just visual purposes, obviously. Um, and there's some benefits with this. I'll show these uh, towards the last six minutes if you don't want to go through all the techie stuff. Um, but here's a good instance. Uh, this is the confidence level or economy, econ you never say it, economic uh, sentiment uh, up to August of uh, 2014. See the sudden rise? No one would ever expect that. Um, and that may potentially be uh, a long opportunity, just saying. Uh, and also so sh show some other weird patterns um, as well. Um, and I'm going to show you how I create these scripts, the technology behind it in the next set of videos. Uh, in the first segment, right after this, uh, I'll show the basic uh, relationship between uh, the ISM PMI of the US versus the S&P 500. And there's some form of a relationship, I'm sure it's commonly known, we can definitely forecast market direction with it. And I'm showing you as a benefit the entire enchilada and the benefits of all this. So sit back, relax, watch the next 20 minutes. As I said, if you don't want to watch uh, the technical, just watch the intro to show the relationship between the ISM PMI and the S&P 500. Watch that, skip the tech stuff. The last six, seven minutes, I go through these charts to show you some of the interesting, some interesting uh, things that you never hear about uh, and uh, that's never mentioned in the news. So uh, be on the lookout for it. It's kind of interesting. Talk to you later. <clears throat> Good afternoon, everybody. My name is, of course, Brian Downing. I'm going to be showing you the importance of using government data, or I call it government data, uh, that will forecast where the market's going to go. So I'm going to show you the rationale behind it and um, the relationship between forecasting the S&P 500 performance versus using forward-looking PMI uh, from the ISM, uh, which is part of the U.S. Manufacturing Index or Purchase Manufacturing Purchase Man Managers Index. So that's what it stands for. So as you can see, this is going back all the way back at least 20 years. Um, you can see here this is S&P 500 performance, and then you also have the ISM PMI. Okay, in that in the blue, you can see it's very close. Um, and uh, I don't know why people don't use this as a metric to forecast where the markets are going when you're holding long-term positions. Now, if you don't believe these sort of, uh, this type of relationship, which is being shown right in front of you, I, I would strongly advise you to get out of trading uh, while you can because you're gonna lose money otherwise. This is like a very simplistic, very classic relationship that can be used to help you earn money. It's like, 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 like l literally, having a, a, a little print press that prints money for you. And if you can automate it and scale it and do other things, you can maximize the opportunities that, that it brings. So this is just the PMI and the S&P 500 earnings, okay? Now, this one is uh, forward earnings and uh, the ISM PMI again. Now, this is the actual in blue of the S&P performance. Um, but when you look at the uh, S&P forward earnings, what does that mean? Well, guess what? You got another indicator that I use is earnings price per share from your leading longs that you believe that are gonna be long. And I've got uh, indicators and all that that are working uh, scripts that actually do that, that track uh, the EPS of companies. Um, and uh, uh, part of my system that I'm building called the AK47, I call it for internal uses only, does all that. And it also is now gonna be charting all this. I'll be showing that in a new uh, upcoming video. But I just wanna show you the relationship here. It's that simple and it works. And it's been working since 1990. In 2014, going into 20, uh, 2050, which obviously lasts 25 years, and it goes you go all the way farther back and see that relationship. It might not be exact, but it's pretty damn close. Um, and here's here's another one. Uh, I'll put both these links in my blog so you get to know it. 
And these are the different types of um, relationships that you can see. Again, uh, S&P revenues per share EPS with the blue line, uh, 52 week four uh, on the EPS, on the revenue. And then you can see uh, the um, PMIs that can be also used as well. World industrial production. So you can easily, since 95, see the relationship. That's how, of course, over the last uh, 20 years. Now, um, here's the S&P 500 revenue, world exports. Uh, important relationship. So, uh, I'll be, like I said, I'll be putting up a video. I've got three programs that I'll be showcasing uh, this type of stuff. It's not going to be showing the U.S. economic indicators or all that. Or G and then you can, you know, I'll, I should also mention GDP has the same relationship with PMI, okay? Because the U.S. represents what 50% of the world's uh, no uh, between Europe and China and U.S. That's 50% of the world's GDP. And of course, U.S. is one of the biggest uh, global powerhouses on an economic front. So there is a solid relationship here. Okay, you cannot deny that. You can also use it for forward-looking, and then you can also use to drill down um, how to maximize those opportunities and this classic relationship. Again, here's world crude oil demand. Um, so there is relationships on these indicators with the stock market and how the markets perform. Okay, so we're using these kind of metrics to gauge um, forward-looking market direction on S&P 500. Okay, so I'm just going to leave it there. Uh, I'll let you go through all of this, but these are really simple, classic relationships that I need to show you. So again, um, this other video current will be another part of another video. Watch it and see one of the big benefits on what I'm building here. All right, talk to you later. Hey everybody, Brian here from quantlabs.net. I just wanted to show you about our government data new table. I've got this new table here called Govern. Um, basically, uh, this is what it looks like. It's got a date, a description, or basically the quantile code and the amount of whatever that particular uh, data source is uh, meaning. Uh, so basically what we're doing is um, I've got this in Postgres, this is RazorSQL. Um, and then we have our C sharp uh, program. Now all the source code and all that, I've, I've, I've highlighted in other past videos and blog postings. So do a search on Postgres and uh, Quandl, Q-U-A-N-D-L, for all this source code and all the history and, and how I got to where I am today. So basically, uh, in the uh, Razor, just want to show you the data is empty for this uh, govern table. Uh, and uh, what it's going to do, in, in essence, it's going to um, basically cycle through a table. Uh, let me just see here. I've, I've got a, a, a text file uh, that I've created called government sources, okay? Now these are the quantile codes that you need to download uh, from, and there's 32 of them. Uh, some of them are University of Michigan for uh, social um, sentiment, cons consumer sentiment, uh, different types of orders, house order, all that. Again, I've, I've, I've listed all these in detail of um, in, in, in the, my blog and my YouTube channel. These here are from Europe, uh, and these are broken down on consumer sentiment, broken down by all countries in Europe. Okay, so this is another metric we can use and break down how the consumer sentiment is, manufacturing confidences within each country within the Eurozone. And then again, again uh, we have different areas that we have government data, as I call it, that we can in different sectors uh, and how the U.S. economy is doing as well. And then there's this, this last one, which is the ISM PMI. Okay, so uh, just letting you know um, where that comes from. So basically what this C-sharp cycle uh, program does, it cycles through each of those um, text uh, file entries and then basically it will download, um, where's the range here? 
Uh, the range is from today's date of October 21st. I'm just hard coding it. I'm just being really lazy here. I'm only really, as this line says, you only run this once because all it's really doing is just doing the initial bulk load into the uh, database of govern. Uh, this table right here that I just showed you, it's empty. So you essentially run this script once and that will load in all the data for uh, this different types of um, government data sources that I showed you. So uh, it's gonna run, it's gonna go through that text file of the, all the different sources, uh, as I showed you here. And the range is as far back as today's date is starting since uh, January 1st, 2000. So I'm getting really almost 14 years, almost uh, 15 years of data. Now the reason I do that is because uh, I don't know any other source that you can go out and grab data from some, somewhere and consolidate it in one database for your own needs. I've, I've kept hammering on at, I'm, I don't want to rely on other third party sources to rely on things like apply volatility and beta and ATR. I want to be able to have my own processes generate that data because it's data that I know that I can trust. And if you're going to rely on, on third party data, um, a lot of it most likely is wrong. And uh, you're not, you possibly may interpret it incorrectly, which can lead to um, incorrect uh, forecasting. So I just like to generate my own data. And uh, that's what I'm doing here as well. And again, as I said, I'm, I'm, I'm retrieving the data from Quandl, okay? Um, now this, this, this source is from, for .NET and C Sharp, uh, so you can use that. Um, just for those that don't know, this is Visual Studio. Um, now, you might also be wondering why am I not using or doing this in MATLAB? Uh, the Quandl uh, client code uh, for MATLAB, just for whatever reason, doesn't work. Um, so I, I, got a, I got a working sample and Visual Studio, but again, I, I go over that in my blog and my YouTube, so I'm not here to go on about that. All right, so as I said, that's our date range we captured from the last 15 years, um, and we basically parse it up, and we insert it into our SQL database or table, which is this guy, <coughs> the government uh, govern uh, table. As I said, it's empty, so I'm going to run it in a little bit. It's going to give you another high level of code. So uh, that's what we're doing here is uh, we're inserting the data, parsing up the different fields. Uh, and that, again, is by um, date of that data, the description, or pretty well the quantum code, as well as the amount for it. Okay, so let me just show you how we do the insert. Again, um, I have put uh, the link in my blog where you can grab that code to download from Postgres, uh, which is this guy right here, the insert SQL. Uh, here's a connection string, all hard-coded, bad, bad, bad. Um, but I do it anyways because I'm just pretty well lazy. We do an insert into the table, into the table of um, govern, which I just showed you. And uh, we do some manipulation, close the connection, and that's it, done. Woo, okay. So let's run it. Okay, so, um, oh, also you gotta make sure you add your Quandl DLL and your proper, when you capture that uses Postgres uh, code, you will need this DLL NPGS, so NP, NPG SQL, okay? Uh, and again, you can find all that in my um, blog and YouTube channel. Okay, so let's run it, no, chip yeah. So off it goes, it skips capturing, oh, ran into an exception. Oh, okay, I know what the problem is. Oh, you, just, just so people know what this exception is. This little exception is normally a good exception. See, it will say too many requests. That means to my Quandl server, I made too many requests. Uh, this particular version uh, does not give the um, authentication token code that Quandl needs you to uh, run. So let me just fix that and restart this video. Okay, so in this video we're going to, I'm going to show you uh, a new uh, C-sharp 
program I got. It's called Get Latest Data. That's what it really does. Uh, as I said in the original, we do the bulk load uh, into the database of uh, the govern. Now what we're going to do is we're going to do a test. Pretty well, the code's the same in C Sharp here. Only difference is uh, we're going to cycle through, but essentially what we're doing is we do a test to see if the data exists. Uh, let me just see where it is. Um, yeah, we do a test. I'm going to see some wonky code. We're going to do a test to see if the query, uh, do a, a basic query on to see if the existing data, last data exists. If it does, then don't do anything. Uh, otherwise, uh, insert the new latest data right here. That's pretty well it. I uh, just wanted to let you know. Um, not the smartest, but uh, maybe it may work. Maybe it won't. Who knows? But let's see. Talk to you later. So the continuation of this govern table uh, with my updated uh, Quandl uh, DLL, the authentication token for Quandl, now works. So uh, let me just show you uh, here. Uh, the table is empty, no rows. As you can see, zero count. Um, so let's go into our government uh, bulk load uh, thing here. I'm going to run this completely uh, and uh, show you it works. So it's going to, like I said, it's going to go out and grab 32 data sources from that list that I talked about here. That's what it's doing right now. And it's going to insert them into the database, into that govern database. It's finished. So if I do a query now, You'll see all the data is there, okay? This is where it gets really powerful because I'm storing 15 years of data. Um, I'm able to track uh, and show all the business cycles of, of things uh, by country within Europe, by even sector, con consumer, all that stuff uh, via the states. But you'll see here, this is uh, the ISM, so you'll see uh, my next set of videos, uh, I'll show uh, the, the charting of this over 15 years worth of data. And uh, let me just show you that uh, how much data we have and, and the amount of rows. It's quite a bit. Uh, it's about almost 2,500. So that's looking good. So next script I'm going to run is going to our C Sharp program. It's going to be a modified uh, version of this guy, but all it's going to do is not grabbing everything. It's just grabbing the most recent uh, data and then just adding it to uh, the govern uh, table. Uh, yeah, to the govern uh, table. Um, and that will be run periodically uh, to get the latest data. And then the next script, which will be done in MATLAB, which is go out and chart all the data and all the different data sources. So you'll be able to visualize the business cycles of where things are at. And then you can see uh, everything. Uh, from, a, from an economic point of view, uh, where you can see consumer sentiment, how it's doing currently, you can see the trend of it, you can see the manufacturing, and how each country is doing within Europe. So hopefully I'll get to that in a little bit. Hey everybody, Brian here. Last video, yay. I uh, just want to let you know I've come to the conclusion that there are some bugs in this process. These codes that you're looking at uh, seem to be, some of them are no longer working, no longer valid. You'll see that in the charts. Uh, so I don't know what's going on with Quandell, if they uh, delete these codes or what's going on. I have to inquire about that, but I have something to show you nonetheless. So here's the final uh, set of scripts that will go out, clear the database and produce uh, a chart for all of these uh, particular um, government data sources from the database that I've shown you in the past. I'm going to show you some interesting uh, pops and uh, just very interesting. Uh, but again, um, I still got to finalize it, but just to show you the benefits of what's going on here. Okay, here's the first chart. This is the durable goods uh, totally shipped out of the US. So this is all in relation since obviously uh, January 2000, but it only goes as far as uh, August. 2014. But here's the funny thing is how the hell did it just shoot up and then come back down 
uh, for that month. Now that tells me something was going on um, that uh, people are getting very confident before something else came along. So don't ask me there. Um, what other interesting little uh, charts can I show you? Uh, let's see. Um, okay, let's start looking at some of the European ones. Um, actually, let me just sorry about that. Let me just show you this one here. Um, I do believe this is consumer sentiment. Uh, this is pretty well flatlined, but you can see that consumer sentiment since uh, 2009 has just slowly declined since uh, 2000. Uh, that's not a good sign, obviously, because, um, well, take a look at, uh, it's, it, it is increasing. But when you're paying people probably 10 or 15 bucks an hour, and they don't have a lot of money to spend, uh, of course their sentiment's not going to be too good. Um, fascinating stuff to see it visually. Uh, okay, let's start look, focusing on some of the European markets. Here's one of Greece. This one's a consumer sentiment, economic sentiment of Greece. Hits a bottom here and actually shoots up in October. Fascinating, eh? Um, so their confidence for some reason is going up in October 2014. Um, I would never have expected that, but there it is. Uh, and to see that uh, like that, that's an actual chart. But you can see it's pretty accurate. It's been slowly declining. Uh, over the last two years, well, especially since around here, uh, whatever that is. Um, let's see what other gems can we find. Uh, let's see what we got here. Oh, Sweden. Now, I just want to show you, um, let's say Hungary. Uh, see how far, how fast it drops off for Hungary? Uh, it's been declining, yeah, but um, it just drops off uh, very quickly. Compared to a place like uh, Sweden, yeah, it drops off, but not as sharp. So that probably tells you that uh, maybe uh, things aren't so bad in Sweden. Uh, it might be a good opportunity to invest uh, into that market. This one of uh, Finland's not as bad. You can see the trend isn't as uh, bad. Um, here's another interesting one I was fascinated with. Portugal. No different than Greece. Uh, the confidence is just steadily rising. Uh, since uh, what uh, last year uh, I don't know when exactly but June of last year but that's def definitely a nice trend uh, Bulgaria uh, another example here um, okay steady decline uh, here, here here's here's uh, something you don't get to see very often you see this sudden drop in Belgium um, so I'm hoping uh, people do see the benefits of these charts uh, why I do them visually as well um, because these are your markets uh, that you can potentially trade in um, let's say in Europe uh, sudden drop we can definitely develop the system in a way where we can measure this drop and say that's a weak market obviously you want to measure among all um, markets once we can get these codes uh, properly implemented uh, which one's your weakest uh, drop or your fastest drop? Um, yeah, it could be your weakest, and then who knows? You get the surprise um, markets like, uh, let's see, uh, was Portugal? Uh, well, you saw, um, just looking, 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 or or Greece. That could be a very strong player in the long. Believe it or not, I mean, it's just it's it's really fascinating. So uh, I just wanted to let people know that uh, you see, hopefully see the benefits of this. Um, and of course, uh, things like uh, um, the U.S. markets as well and by sector as well. So hopefully this pulls it all together to just show you what you can look for, generate some trading ideas, and then hopefully uh, break down these um, markets uh, by sector to get your definite longs and shorts. All right, um, hopefully uh, that'll help you out. Um, and definitely this will be part of my upcoming uh, analytics service, uh, which is part of that uh, internal trading system I call the AK-47. Talk to you later.